These parrotfish are my favorite. And these fish guys are, are snapper fish, okay? So I clean these fish fishes. And I'm gonna just try and get rid of the excess water. Then we're gonna start seasoning here. Over on this side is my arm and my spices. I season here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is my um pimento pimento seed all spice. And I also have the the powdered one that I put here. And here I pounded up two about two dozen um, of the allspice, the pimento seed. And um, this measuring spoon is a half tablespoon. This measuring spoon is half tablespoon, guys. And um, I have everything here is one, which is half tablespoon, except this, which is a fish seasoning. Um, I doubled up on. Right, because we're making fish, so I made um, a tablespoon of fish season. And then here I have um, thyme, that's thyme. One tablespoon of the fish seasoning here. And that's a fish seasoning. And that's, and then I, and after that, I have a half tablespoon of thyme, the thyme. And um, I'll, I'll just, this is cayenne pepper, Old Bay seasoning, salt, allspice, garlic powder, black pepper, adobe, all-purpose, and the Maggie all-purpose, and they're all here, guys, and I told you those are half tablespoon. So these are parrot fish, guys, and these are snapper fish, and guys, I also love goat fish. Goat fish kind of remind me of shrimp, and it's very meaty, but I didn't see any fresh goat fish. I clean these fishes, and as I told you, I have um, videos out on how to clean fish. And then also I could have uh, referred you to that video on how to season, but then I'll season this one for you to see. And yeah, I dried it, dried the, dried the container, dried because I'm going to be frying. And you notice my fish eyes, guys. The fish eyes are not looking like dull, right? Your fish eyes. And this fish is, looks pretty good. And it's pretty weighty fish and this one was too long so i cut it because you know my pot like i don't have pots that big and i like when i um fry my fish tail and it's crispy that which is why i didn't cut it but i think i should cut but the fact that i cut this i won't cut the, the tail okay so then i'm just gonna season this fish guys um i measured out the seasonings and basic for basic all you need for fish is salt and black pepper okay basic yeah salt and black pepper but then you know you play around with your spices and you add what other spices you would rather have on your fish so then i'm just gonna be and you notice guys i slice on the uh, fish there i put slits so that you know it can take in the seasoning and I like to put like one salty and one black pepper on the inside here. And basically that's all I'm going to do with all of them. And then I'm going to get on the inside here with salt, black pepper. Yep. And then, you know, you get an into your fish guy, then you season the head here. Because when you're eating, you want um, something, you know, your fish to be flavorful. So, yeah. Salt all over. On both sides. As well as if you want to go on the inside first, you put salt. Essential. Seasoning that is a must. Salt and black pepper. And then, you know, I just measured it for you to, to see that, but I'm going to be adding more salt if after at the end it's, because at, at the end it's not tasteful enough because fish, guys, like, takes quite a bit of salt, especially fried fish. 
and as I said, the choice is yours. You know your health, guys, and no one can say, well, this is how much salt you take, your fish should take, or how much pepper. You know your health, and you know what is it that you can take, okay? So this is just a guide for you to follow. And yeah, all my seasonings. As well as guys, I can just mix it up here, mix it up all together and you know, and then just apply to the fish. So when you're add, adding extra salt, you can add like your all-purpose seasoning, something salt if you don't want to add just the natural salt. You know, the choice is yours, and this is the powder seasoning. Just powder seasoning, a piece of seasoning I'm putting onto this fish here. Guys, I love fish. But you have to be careful of the fine bones. I think the season I measure out is good enough. I don't think I need anything more. But guys, um, as I showed you the basic, right? You don't need to have all these seasons if you don't have them in your cupboard. You don't need to be putting all these. You put, put the season that you like to taste. Because it's about the flavor. But basic for fry fish, it's salt and black pepper. And guys, I have to go over these um, seasoning to let you see what it is, um, powder season I'm using, working with here. Yep, I'm good here. And then you know you rub on season onto your fish tail here. You rub the seasoning. And this fish is gonna be frying a couple of hours from now. Now for the allspice. And I'm trying to get the allspice here, right here, guys, where you slit the fish. You know, you get your seasoning all up in your fish. Because when time comes to eat, you should be tasting these flavorful spices that complements the fish. And guys, um, the amount of seasoning I show you it has, has to do with the amount of fish here I'm working with. I have two big parrot fish there. So you know if you're working with less fish then you could um, use less half of um, the amount of seasoning, each seasoning as well as you know you, you don't have to use all the seasoning. You season it until you're, you're half satisfied with um, the way it tastes. And I'm gonna cover this with foil paper. Let me show you my see the seasonings once more, guys, because I'm not sure if I showed you all the seasonings that I'm using here. Okay, guys, so I'm just gonna repeat the seasons I use, and that's my Easter bun over there. The one I bake is here. And um, yeah, pimento seed, I used um, two dozen pounded up, 24. 
pimento seed and then I use garlic powder, black pepper, allspice, the same as the pimento but this is um, grounded, adobo, all purpose, the maggi, all purpose, salt, cayenne pepper, old bay seasoning, and thyme and these are all the half tablespoon and then the fish seasoning was one tablespoon two of this the fish seasoning and that's um that's all the spices i used so guys before i cover it i just decided to cut a scotch one of pepper you know so that the fish can um take on that center and secure tightly guys so that um you know all the flavors been trapped on the inside. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. 24 hours later, guys, I'm about to fry the fish, so then you're gonna put enough oil to fry all your fish. So for this size pot, um, that's enough oil, guys, because I have several fishes and the fishes are big. So I'm letting the pot um heat. I'm gonna also put a piece of thyme, piece of thyme, guys, and I'm gonna put a piece of thyme and some pimento seed just to give my oil flavor, and then I'll put garlic. But you have to be careful when you're putting these things; they splatter. I let that burn. You also want something broad to turn your fish guys and like wear long sleeve okay because you leave your skin exposed and oil splashes so I'm covering my skin so just in case there's any splatters I won't get burned so I'm gonna fry these delicious lovely fish see them over here so my stove is on eight I think I'm gonna turn it down to five and let me remove these. Actually, I'll keep them for now. But you have to be careful of the all spice because that's the one that splashes the pimento seed. I'm going to put one of these fish in. And these fish are big, guys. You see, I didn't even cut this tail. Maybe I should have cut it. It's going to break. So my fish um, is able to turn without sticking in the pot, depending on the type of pot you have. And um, you know, if your fish, if kind of fish sticks to the pot, then don't turn it until it it frees up. It 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 starts moving freely. Let me put one of the parrots. These parrots are big. gonna remove those pimento seeds so that they won't splash on me so my stove is on six guys I'm gonna keep it at that to get a nice fry now let me test to see if this is moving freely Let it fry because I don't it's not moving free. I don't want the skin to start peeling from it. But this one is moving freely. 
because if you force it to turn and it's not moving freely then the skin starts peeling then and I don't like when my fish skin sticks to the pot Feels free guys, it's moving now. It's not sticking anymore. Because I allow it to fry, right? Until it frees up. So now let me turn it. This fish is really big. Carrot fish is my favorite. I love carrot fish. I love snapper fish. I love goat fish. The goat fish reminds me of shrimp. So I had to get two parrot fish. Even though I find parrot fishes, they're expensive. So you stay by your fish and check it. And turn when needed when it has the desired color then you remove it from the pan when you're satisfied with the way it's been fried on good friday we eat fish in jamaica we eat fish and on good friday I'm taking care here, taking care here to ensure that the fish doesn't break for presentation purposes and also the skin doesn't, is not left behind in the pot. So you have, you have to wait until the fish, you know, is, um, is, is willingly moving without any struggle. Because if the, you'll be struggling if it's sticking to the pot, you find it won't move freely. So that is why you need to fry it on one side until the fish moves freely. And then my sides are done so I like to get on the inside of my fish. So I kind of have them standing up. That one is done so I'm going to have this standing up so the oil can, you know, go on the inside and cook it a bit. Fry it. Cook it good. The minute I have space in my pot, guys, I like to put another fish in that space. And the tail, maybe I could have cut it some more, but I don't really like to cut my tail. This one is fried dry, now it's time to remove it. It's fried dry on the inside there. And this one is moving freely. These fish are big guys, so I'm getting the oil to go on the inside. When I'm here popping, I remove these things, the garlic and pimento seed. So it's so big, I'm just doing this one by itself, and then I have one more parrot left to do. That parrot over there. And then I'm done. So if guys, if you have a rock, you can have your fish draining on a rock. I'm going to get them to drain in a minute. Bye. 
so guys you don't adjust your flame unless your pot is smoking if your pot is smoking then you lower your flame but if it's a fine and your fish is frying nicely you leave it at the level it is the stove you leave the stove at the level it is you don't um, turn it down unless you know you find your pot is smoking if you find your pot is smoking meaning mean there's too much heat And I'm going to turn it burn off. I'm going to be prepping this guys to prepare the stew fish. So guys, here I have prepped onion, assorted color, pep bell peppers, the carrot, tomato, scotch bonnet pepper, thyme, and garlic, and green onion. So what I just showed you, I prepped, and I'm just waiting for the pot to heat. Half of the tomato that I prepared and leave half behind. So the scotch bonnet pepper, garlic, and leave behind half of uh, the tomato and bell pepper. So that was black pepper all-purpose seasoning. You know, just a couple of shakes, guys. Fish seasoning. Soy sauce. Guys, if you want to measure, you could measure. That's about a, uh, two to three tablespoons. Oyster sauce. Old Bay Ketchup Two cups of water. One tablespoon of cornstarch. And I'm going to be putting um, three tablespoons of water and mix this. So guys, I have my cornstarch here mixed. I'll put this in after I put the fish in and now that, that this is boiling you know I put the carrot in first because the carrot is a bit hard and depending on how soft you want your carrot now it's time to put the rest of it the bell pepper I put half of it put the fish in and then put the next half It smells really delicious and depending on how much gravy you want to make guys how much gravy and depending on how much fish you're cooking you may need to put more water or less depending on how much fish and how much gravy you want to cook see how big this fish is guys look at the tail sticking out I don't have a big enough pot I'm gonna leave that one behind or another video the other parrot and put this parrot in
And these fish are huge fishes. They're huge. So I'm gonna prepare that and leave the rest um, for another video. These fish are very big and they're just gonna absorb all this gravy, but I don't want to make too much gravy. I'm gonna add the cornstarch that I mixed in with the water to, you know, thicken the gravy. Add the remainder. Smells really good guys and I don't want the water to evaporate so quickly so I you know I'm gonna lower the flame. Some people don't like butter but it's optional that much. And maybe I can add some more gravy. So it would be some more water, but it's so tasteful guys, it doesn't need any salt or anything. I don't really wanna I don't really wanna add any more um, It's good. So I'm gonna add some more water. Guys I'm gonna make um rice and peas. some peas from this can of gungu peas and this is Easter Sunday I'm preparing you know dinner for Easter Sunday And this fish is almost cooked right so there's not much cooking it's just a matter of making some gravy to have with the fish to serve with the fish and this is my parrot fish I love parrot fish my parrot fish were blue guys and they change color the minute I put them I cook them they were blue my pot is looking good here and colorful. And see the cornstarch starts thickening up the gravy. I'm just gonna cook, put the turn this on a low flame because I'm not really cooking much here. The carrot is already cooked and fish is already cooked and yeah. I'm cover it. Let me taste to make sure it's salty enough, the gravy. delicious maybe just a dash of salt so you know 10 minutes on a low flame guys yeah I'm mm, good this is good let me cover and I'm going to turn the flame off and then I'm going to get going with the rice and peas. Guys, even though my stove is all off, how could I forget my allspice? Put about five of them. Because, you know, when I'm reheating then, and the heat will take on the essence from the allspice. Yeah, so the burner is off and now it's time for the gungu peas and rice. In this pot, I have four cups of water, um, and I wash three cups of rice, a peg of garlic, thyme, green onion. I'm gonna be using the instant pot this time, guys. And this was what I used to measure: four cups of water and three cups of rice wash. And I'm just gonna season this a bit with this is optional allspice not too much just like a dash 
so if you don't have um this all spice guys you could have you could have put um you know this powder one but it's very strong so just a little bit but because i have this one i'm gonna put like it's optional you don't have to like you know three drop it in a lot of times i cook rice and peas i don't put the all spice but you could and black pepper I'm gonna drain this water from the gungo piece, guys. But I need the strainer to use, so I'm going to. I want you to see in this spot a bit, guys. You know, the dashes of salt and black pepper and allspice. I washed two cups of. Uh, three cups of rice. Three cups and four cups of water so i'm gonna put the rice in even though i'm making rice and peas i don't like when my um my rice and peas has too much peas okay so the gungu this was what came from the gungu i don't know if it's too i think okay i'm gonna use all of it i was gonna take some out but i'll, I'll use all, all of it i don't think that's too much And then from here on you're gonna add if if it's not salty enough more black pepper and salt I think I'm gonna add a cup more water guys that ended up five cups of water yeah that should be good black pepper as I don't really measure I shake lightly salt and it's optional sugar Like, you know, two tablespoons, depending on how, what taste you want to bring out from it. So, yeah, and then stir, and then I'm going to turn this instant pot on. Let me taste it before. It's good, not salty. I think it can take a little bit more salt. with a uh, scotch bonnet pepper and a little bit of butter here most of the times i'm cooking rice guys i don't add butter but you know just to show you there are things you can add So on the stove top guys within half an hour to 45 minutes your rice should be steam up to an hour but in this instant pot it's gonna take you know about 15 minutes so it takes about 10 the instant pot takes about 10 minutes to heat up guys and then four minutes time then it will it takes 10 minutes to heat up and it will cook in four minutes 
guy the rice is done. You get to take a look at the rice, guys. Let me just flop up my rice. I take the scotch bunny pepper out. And I'm going to serve that. Now guys, time for me to taste. I'm going to just put a bit of ketchup here on my fish. Ketchup squirted over there guys. It's a good thing it didn't make a mess. So yeah, I um, broke a piece of the parrot fish tail because that's my favorite. I don't like fish head. Fish tail is my favorite and the rungo peas and rice with a piece of my bun and guys fish and bun fish and bun they call the bun spice bun guys but it's not spicy as in hot okay we have two type of spices hot spice and sweet spice so most times people when people hear about spice they think it's hot This fish is good. Love it. Guys, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and please recommend the video to your friends. You know, and get them to subscribe. It's good. And guys, I hope you. All had a wonderful Easter. So guys, comment down below and let me know what is it that you look forward to at Easter time. How is that that you celebrate Easter? Jamaicans look forward to fish, frying fish, and making bun. And also festival and bami. I do have a bami uh, video out on how to fry the bami guys. I also have a video out on how to make the festival and those things we eat with our fish. Especially when we're on the beach. This is delicious guys. The bungo peas is so good. And I also have a video out on the bungo peas. How to make the gungo piece from scratch and this one is the one from the can that I bought over the Christmas. You know, so you can also enjoy your gungo piece from the can. And I still have one left. And as I told you, tart fish. Tart fish is my favorite. These fish were blue when I bought them, but you know you cook them and they change color. So guys, um, stay safe and see you in the next video.